Hi everybody, this is Ms. Nelson here and we are now on lesson 1.6 of our fourth grade Florida Go Math book. Lesson 1.6 is about adding whole numbers. So there's three things that we're going to do in this lesson. First of all, when we have a problem with whole numbers, we're going to learn how to first estimate that problem or estimate that answer, then find the real answer. And then after we learn those two things, we're going to learn what the commutative property is and the associative property is. So first off, talking about estimating. In order to estimate the answer to a problem, you need to know how to round. So we're going to first do the estimate to the side and then we'll do the real answer. So when we estimate these types of problems, unless it specifically tells you differently, you're going to underline your biggest number and look next door to it in order to round. So next to my seven is a two. We already know if it's a five or higher, our seven will go up. If it's a number that's smaller than five, our seven stays the same. So our seven is going to stay the same here and everything after it becomes a zero. I have one, two, three, four numbers after it. So I'm going to have four zeros after my seven. One, two, three, four. So that 72,931 is rounded to 70,000. Now I also have to do that for my bottom number. So I'm going to look next to my one. I have an eight. An eight is bigger than a five. So that eight is going to make my one go up to a two. After I move my one up to a two, I change everything after it to a zero. So I have one, two, three, four numbers after it. So I'm going to have four zeros after my two. So that 18,563 is rounded to 20,000. Now I'm going to add these two numbers to find my estimate. Here's a trick. You already know all these are zeros. Zero plus zero is zero. So really all you have to do in this type of problem is add the seven and the two, which is a nine. So my estimate for this problem is going to be 90,000. So if my real answer is close to 90,000, I can be pretty confident that I got it correct. So I'm going to erase this stuff so that it can be out of our way so that we can now find the real answer to this problem. So we're going to add 72,931 plus 63. Always, always, always when adding or subtracting, you start in your ones. 1 plus 3 is 4. 3 plus 6 is 9. 9 plus 5 is 14. So that means I need to put my 4 here and carry my 1. So now I have 1 plus 2, that's 3, plus 8 more. So 3 plus 8, that's 11. So I put my 1 here and I carry my 1. So now I have 1 plus 7 is 8. 8 plus 1 is 9. So my real answer to this problem is 91,494. That's close to my estimate of 90,000. So I can be pretty sure that I did that problem correctly. All right, so moving on, we're gonna just skip all over these estimates and these adding because I think you can pretty much get that very easily. You guys are smart. And we're gonna come down here and we're gonna talk about our commutative property and our associative property. Now you're gonna need to know these names and you're gonna need to know what they are. They're super easy, but they're very important to math. So the first one here, the commutative property, you hear how it sounds sort of like the word commute. When you commute, that means you're going somewhere, right? You're moving. So the way that I remember the commutative property is just that my numbers are going to move to the opposite places that they were in before they started. So four plus five, if those numbers move into the other places, they become five plus four. So in other words, they just switch places or they commute 
4 plus 5 is going to give me the same answer as 5 plus 4. Commutative property. Now associative property, it kind of works the same way. Here we're dealing with parentheses. We have three numbers. When you see parentheses in a math problem, it means do what's inside of those parentheses first. So if I look just on this left-hand side of the equal sign, this math problem is telling me 4 plus 7 plus 3, but it wants us to do 7 plus 3 first, find that answer, which is 10, and then add 4 to get 14. Well, the associative property tells me, hey, it, if I don't like to add 7 plus 3 first, I'm going to get the same answer if I just move my parentheses and do 4 plus 7 first. So 4 plus 7 is 11, and then I add my 3 on there, and I still get 14. So the associative property is just saying, eh, I don't want to do 7 plus 3 first, so I'm going to move my parentheses and do 4 plus 7 first. So you can also do this. You could also say 4 plus parentheses 7 plus 3. That's also the same as if I put inside of my parentheses. Sorry, that's not a very good looking parentheses. 3 plus 4. And then I have my plus 7 outside of my parentheses. As long as I have the same numbers, it doesn't matter which numbers are inside of the parentheses. So that's the associative property. So commutative, the numbers just move to different position. Associative property, the parentheses move to a different position. So same numbers, just the parentheses move. And up here, the numbers move. So if we look over here, it says, to say whether these problems are using the commutative or associative property. So I can tell right here without even finding this missing number that since I see parentheses, this is going to be the associative property. Now, I know that inside of my parentheses here, if, if I look just actually, if I look on the left hand side of the equal sign, I see that it's using these three numbers, 4,580, 5,008, and 2,351. So over here, all I have to do is find the missing number out of those three. So 4,580, 4,580, 2,351, 2,351. So the one that's missing, this one, is what I'm going to have to write right here, 5,008. Okay. Now here, in this problem, I don't see any parentheses. I see two, one number plus one number, so two numbers, equals one number plus one number. That's the commutative property. So all they're doing, oops, that doesn't look very, you can't read that. What grade am I teaching, fourth grade or kindergarten or what? Okay, so over here, to find the missing number, I look over here where we have both numbers, I just write the one that's missing, which would be my 4,890. Man, this pen is not working well. All right, now down here, same thing. I just have two numbers, no parentheses, and these numbers look like they're just switching places. So that's the commutative property. I'm just going to shorten it there. And I know that I look on the side that has both numbers. Then I look over here. I see it's, I see it's already used the 3,385. So the missing one must be the 2,592. All right, guys, that is lesson 1.6. I hope you have learned how to add whole numbers, estimate whole numbers, and identify the commutative and associative property. If you have any more questions, just go ahead and leave me some comments. Thanks.